Huge day for gold. We finally made it to the pivot. And the Fed went big on this one, cutting half a percent. So it's going to take a hot minute to figure out exactly what this means for gold price going forward. But I just saw gold kiss $2,600, leaving us to wonder, what do we do now? Okay, we got our pivot. The Fed went big on this one with an oversized rate cut. That gives a 50 basis point cut rather than 25. Now, this is not a case of a single event changing the course of gold price forever, but it's definitely a significant shift. So this has been a big deal long foretold, something that you could say we've been waiting on since at least summer of last year. And now that we're here with gold price already climbing 25% on the year, well, now we get to see just how much higher it can really go and whether or not we need to rethink a few things. But just out of the gate, I would say the only crazy reaction would be to quit buying. Now, the strange part in all of this, of course, is gold's rally this year. It happened well ahead of the actual event. We're up 25% for the year, and the rally has been this story all year long. Now, if this was a logical rally, it might have looked a little bit more like this. And we can say there are factors other than the federal funds rate here and investors pricing and depricing around it. But a huge part of this has been traders trying to adjust for what they felt was coming long ahead of the event. Well, now that we've made it to the Fed policy pivot, the price finally makes sense. The important part here is that we finally gotten to the other side of this maybe irrational curve. And I just mentioned the possible doubt that maybe federal interest rates aren't the big story in gold price. But if we go back to the chart, it took more than three years to get past the 2080 mark. We got there in August of 2020, batted at it again in March of 2022, again, summer of 23. And then look what happened. Price shot past it early this year and not by a little we're 25% past it. So rate policy in the bond market has definitely had a huge impact on that swing. So what's that telling us? Well, like I said, I think we finally lined up cause and effect on gold price. So you could say we're in a new spot here. We've made that leg up and we've gotten here with no big retracements. And I'm not going to force you to look at the chart again, but what we've seen is a 25% year-to-date rally with no significant corrections. So that means that every time we've seen a dip, it's been aggressively bought up. So participants want to come in, they're just being careful. Well, now that we're seeing rate cuts, there's no reason to think the price is going to fall significantly. So that probably means it's time to rethink what's normal for gold price. So there's a big implication here. Some of us are probably rethinking our buying strategy. If you have a set amount that you want to spend on gold or at least a range, you've probably already considered one of two options, either buy smaller units or buy less often. I've mentioned fractional a few times lately because that's definitely an option if you can find good prices. Summit Metals has been running sales on smaller gold coins, and they're a channel sponsor, by the way. That's why I mentioned them specifically, but this is relevant. You should check them out if you haven't already. But you might also just slow your buying frequency. Flash sale or not, one ounce gold is going to be cheaper than these quarters or one-tenths. Now, if you don't have budget constraints, maybe you simply plan to just keep buying the same amount. And I'm sure there's some of you buying more. And I would say good for you because even though the buying environment has definitely changed, the reason to be buying has not. So you saw me sneak that maple leaf in and sneak that 2009 ultra high relief double eagle out. Well, I don't know how many of you have been selling, but we're at a place where price has climbed so fast that dealers are paying less for numismatic pieces. And that's important. It's also anecdotal. You know, some buyers, they'll pay more. But this is logical. If buyers are already being careful about buying because price is so high, they aren't as likely to spend more. On top of that, dealers know this. So any that I've talked to have been lowballing the options we might normally think of as numismatic coins. And if dealers are paying less to buy them back, I'd rather not spend a bunch more to buy them in the first place rethinking my own buying strategy, but I don't know how much I'll change. We've known this was coming for a while now. We've seen it happening all year. So even though gram bars are out there as an option, I'm not making that kind of a shift personally. So I'm still sticking to eagles, buffaloes, maples primarily. 
and then I'll kick around a few more sizes. Now I know the coins my local dealers are most interested in buying back are the ones you see on the table here. So that's what I'm most interested in and I don't have to go crazy on premiums. Now, why am I even bringing this up? Well, I've been talking about this for a while. High prices, they're going to send more gold owners to shops to sell and we're already seeing this and shop owners are simply giving better prices on the popular option. So if selling does kick up even more, buyers are going to get more and more picky. That's a headache that you can easily avoid. So what happens to gold price next? Well, we take a breather. I mentioned this was a little bit of a price reset. I don't think anyone knows anything for a few weeks at least. I'm planning to get another purchase in quick and then I guess I'll take a new look. I think the $2,600, $2,700 prices for 2024 still makes sense. $3,000 in 2025, that's possible. Now, one of the reasons for that is that we still haven't hit an inflation adjusted high for gold. Depends on who you ask, but gold would be right around $2,673 or $3,200 if we calculated based on what we saw in 1980. Now, if you were to look at the ETF inflows and just general Western investor sentiment, interest in gold is moderate. So going from ETF outflows, we know there was a lot of gold pessimism in 2022 and it's changed, but not a lot. And if gold has been competing against treasury yields, well, we're going to see investors coming in. And then on top of that, we still have central bank demand. Central banks bought a record amount of gold in the first half of the year. So the environment has changed pretty dramatically over the last two years. But everybody seems to be saying the same thing. Gold still has a lot of room to run. Okay, let's call it good there. Let us know what you think of this new normal. Are you resetting your expectations for price or still holding out for a return to the good old days? Let us know. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you want to hear more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.